So, when was the last time that you saw your 11 and your 9 year old? This was my daughter's fourth birthday party. Uh, it's about five years ago? Let's see, October 30th, 2016. So, yeah, okay, so coming up years. on five years. Okay, and so why has it been so long, man? Uh, well, What's up, YouTube? Atlanta Street Interviews out here with another one. Um, so we got my man out here today. How you doing today, man? Still learning. All right, all right. So listen, are you homeless? I am. Okay. And how long have you been homeless? Uh, I've been homeless roughly five years. Okay, okay, roughly five years. How old are you? 37. 37. And so what was it that happened five years ago that made you go from having a roof over your head to being out on the street? Going to jail. Okay, what'd you go to jail for? Uh, it was a drug charge and a DV, domestic violence. Okay, and so did they happen at the same time? Yes. Okay, and so what was the drug charge? What drug? Uh, it was methamphetamine. Okay, and so were you using methamphetamines? Yes. All right, and so uh, the, the person that you had the domestic violence, was this a, a romantic partner? Yes. Okay, uh, male or female? Female. Okay. And do you guys have kids together? No. Okay. Um, and so, how long had you been in this relationship? Uh, this was, I'd say, roughly a year. We've been in a relationship. Okay. And was this the first time when the with the time when you went to jail? Was that the first time domestic violence happened? That was the first time I went to jail and domestic violence and drug charge. First charge for anything. First for everything. Okay. And so, how long did you go to jail for? I was in jail for about three months. Three months. All right, why was you in jail for three months? You couldn't get bonded out or anything? That's right. Okay. All right, so let's just, um, let's start from the beginning. Well, not from the beginning. Let me ask, also ask, uh, do you have any kids? I do. How many kids you got? Two kids. Okay. How old is the oldest? How young is the youngest? Uh, my son, he's 11, and my daughter's nine. Okay. Um, with the same woman? Yes. All righty. Were you married? No. Okay, have you ever been married? No. All righty. All right, so let's start from the beginning. So where are you from? South Bend, Indiana. All right, shout out South Bend, South South Bend. And so growing up in South Bend, did you have both your mother and your father in the household? No. Okay, who'd you grow up with? Uh, mostly my dad's family, his sisters. Okay, and so um, why not your mom? I stayed with my mom, uh, say intermittent periods, but uh, she was strung out homeless a lot of times even in jail so. what was she strung out on what was her drug uh her her drug of choice was crack cocaine okay and so what about your dad because uh, you said you stayed with his family yeah he he was in prison for a good portion of my young childhood and uh he was also married to another woman when he got out so Did i lived with him for a little bit for about two years but that wasn't that wasn't the best of times why what 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 was going on what happened uh mostly his wife uh, not being fond of me because of my mom. Okay. Okay. I mean, how do you think, what, what ages was was that? Uh, well, around that time I stayed with him, I was about what, 12. Yeah, 11 or 12. So kind of right before he became a teenager. Okay. Do you think that had any impact on your teenage years? Yeah, great impact. Profound. How so? Well, I stayed with his sister off and on and not having him as a presence, as a, I say, a, a commanding presence in my life, that, that did force me to have to take up some things of my own and learn on my own. But um, I say the experience that I had with him was worthwhile to an extent because it helped me hone some of my artistic chops um, and also appreciate what I had when I had it. And that, that what is that, that axiom, uh, the grass isn't always green on the other side. It also helped me appreciate that too. Okay, all right. And so so growing up, uh, you know, um, so let me ask you this. I mean, would you say that you had a fairly normal childhood or no? I would say it wasn't normal, but it was, uh, i say it was overall, it was, it was a great learning experience. And I call it my first childhood. This is now my second. Okay, okay. And so did you go to high school? I did. Did you graduate? I did. All right, any college? I did a, did a 
about a year in college and a year in Job Corps. Also served time in the military, four years in the Air Force. Okay, wow. I mean, what college did you go to? Uh, University of Alaska in Anchorage. Okay. And then you did Job Corps after that? And then you went so, to the military? You was in the Air Force for four years? I did military first. Okay. Uh, right after high school. Then I went to Job Corps, but I did college uh, while I was in the service. Do, do you regret leaving the military? No, not at all. Okay, so why'd you leave? Oh, uh, well, I <clears throat> went to drive trucks. And the issue that I had was I actually was trying to cross over into the Army from the Air Force and they stonewalled me. So I did four years and that was it. As okay. soon as I got out, I went to Job Corps for a year to do three months of CDL training to get my uh, truck driving license. Okay, and that's what you did for a good bit? Uh, driving trucks for, yep, 12 years. Okay, and so I guess that was the time period when you had your kids. How long was the, the relationship you had with their mom? How long was that relationship? I said about five years. Five years? And so why did that relationship dissolve? Oh, uh, well, the energy wasn't right. I uh, went to live with her on in her neck of the woods uh, a couple of times, and each time ended in failure. Well, why specifically? I mean, tell us what happened. Well, it seemed as if she didn't want me there. It seemed like she was more content with me uh, collecting those checks over the road, driving trucks, and just sending them to her. What was she doing that, that, that gave you the, the idea that she didn't want you there? What was she doing or saying, or what well, was happening? Yeah, just just attitude. Uh, I mean, were you guys nagging. having sex? Yeah, we, we, we'd have sex, but it seemed like uh, it was more like a chore. So she yeah, would be nice. giving you the duty duty type sex, but not sex like she wanted you to... Okay. Yes. All right. And so... And so I guess, you know, at, at some point, um, that relationship uh, broke down. You were still driving trucks. You got into another relationship. Yes. When did you start? What, what age were you the first time you used methamphetamines? I was... 30. 30? Yeah. Okay. So, and so you was driving trucks at that point? Oh, yeah. Okay. And um, and so at some point you got with this other lady um, and, you know, about uh, sometime around the age of 32, I guess, is when those charges happened? See, I had that been... So when the charges happened, I was 31. So it okay. been over a year, so yeah. Okay, 31. okay. And, and so why have you been homeless for five years because you're only in jail for three months yes. um so so let me ask you this so as far as your dad's family up in indiana that you grew up with yep. do they know that you're homeless uh my dad does your the dad knows the rest of yeah is your mom still alive she's not she's not my condolences for that um and so well, let me ask you this i mean i just when i just said that i noticed kind of a look and so how do you feel about your mom man uh, there's there's mixed emotions. She was one of my favorite people in the world, but I also understand that her her situation lent itself to to my childhood experiences being uh, a mixed bag itself. Uh, she had a bunch of kids, didn't really care for them. How many kids did she have? Uh, that that lived uh, seven. Okay. Do you know how many different dads? Uh, at least. Okay. Okay. All right, man. And so, and so. Okay. So, when was the last time that you saw your eleven and your nine-year-old? This was my daughter's fourth birthday party. Um, it's about five years ago. Let's see, October thirtieth, twenty sixteen. So yeah. Okay, so coming up years. on five years. Okay, and so why has it been so long, man? Uh, well, once I went to jail, uh, my the mother of my ch children, she wasted no time getting up with another person and, heck, having another baby, getting pregnant. The miscarriage that she had, which would have been our third, I, that was pretty much the death knell for our relationship, I'd say. And uh, she wasted no time once I went to jail, uh, re-upping with another gentleman. Well, I, I get that that was the death knell for you guys' relationship, but what about for your kids? Um, I had already 
consign myself to the whole child support thing, but no more. No more with child support, no more with taxes. Screw it all. That's my mindset. So with my kids, though, knowing that they're, they're pretty much cleaved to her for, for their childhood, I want that to be a situation where they come to me or I can engage with them on my own terms and that'll more than likely be teenage years for them. Not, not early childhood. Okay. Um, if you had to put yourself in their position, how do you think they feel with, you know, kind of having your absence in their life up to this point? Because I'm going to be honest, you know, like I've got daughters um, before COVID. There were things like daddy daughter dance and breakfast with dad and stuff like that at school. And I would always see the, the girls whose dads wasn't there and my heart would break for them. How do you think your, your, your daughter specifically, but also your son, how do you think they feel about your absence? Well, uh, they figure, I, I would figure hey, they have each other. If not me, they have their mom. But if they see examples like that, they, they have they have at least those those connections in my stead. And since they I would imagine, yeah, they do know who I am, they hope and they wonder, for they are kids, that they'll see me one day. I like that notion. Do do you regret not seeing them uh, for this many years? I've had my regrets. Do you miss them? I do. If you had to rate yourself as a father, given the absence that, you know, that you felt like you had in your life from your parents at times, and if you had to rate yourself from one to 10, what would you rate yourself? Uh, probably a two. two. That that two that two would be for the two times I attempted to make something out of a relationship with the mom. But, okay. And so, I mean, you've been out here for five years, you say. And so, I, you know, like, I guess, are, is there anything that you're doing actively to try to get out of this situation? There's something of a rapport I have with this. The, the more I've done it, especially in this place, it's been unprecedented. Uh, making shelter for myself, helping other people get assistance, but not really showing that much concern for myself. I'm starting to wonder if uh, I don't have a home out in this homeless atmosphere, like being just being in the wind. Just being comfortable with it, basically. There's a, there's a level of comfort that I didn't think I felt, but I actually feel. Like, I really didn't feel it So before. do you think that you have a desire to get out of this situation, or is that something that you're starting to question? I'm actually starting to question it. Okay, okay. Well, listen, man, I mean, um, so let me ask you this. So if you can get in a time machine and you can go back to any age that you ever was, ever in life, but you only had 30 seconds to be in that time period, you can give yourself anything, any, tell yourself anything. What age would you go back to and what would you, what would the advice be? Uh, it'd probably be go back to four years old. Go back to four years old and for 30 seconds be like, hey, don't, don't, stay, don't, uh, don't go to sleep in the closet. What happened in the closet? Uh, that was my fourth birthday party, my earliest memory. I went to sleep in the closet for my fourth birthday party, and they, they, they ate all the food, ate all the cake, ate all of that. Didn't save me nothing. So I'd be like, don't, don't, don't go to sleep in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's still something you remember, man, so it must have been fairly traumatic. Well, I, I remember what it looked like. I mean, it was decked out, but I, I, I've always been an aloof person, even from childhood, always aloof. So what I did was, I, I went straight to the bedroom. I mean, I think I was tired too. I went to the bedroom, went in the closet, and went to sleep. And by then I woke up, it was all over and it was all gone. <laughs> so yeah. All right, man, well listen. Um, so if anybody out there wanted to reach out or donate, do you have a social media or cash app or anything like that? I do, um, but what I would do is, uh, <clears throat> Cause I don't even remember my cash app now. I would give them my email. Okay, what's your email? Uh, e for Echo, D for Dog, B for Victor, A for Alpha, L for Lingo, A for Alpha, N for Nancy, C for Charlie, E for Echo, 25. 
edvalence25 at gmail.com. We can go from there. Okay. All right, man. Well, listen, man, we really appreciate you taking the time um, and having a conversation with us, man. And yes. so we definitely wish you nothing but the best out here, okay? Thank you, sir. All right, man. Have a good one, all right? Yes, well. All right. All right, man. So real quick, um, so what's your cash at, man? Balance 25. It's V for Victor, A-L-A-N-C-E-25. All right, man. Dollar All sign. Right. Dollar <laughs> sign. Got you. All right, man. Have a good one, okay?